What makes a person of interest? Good morning. A little bit early morning this morning, guys. 624. 624 with Coach Burt. 86% of the wealthiest people in the world work out in the morning. Get their bodies moving. Circulation. So I'm headed to uh, Nashville right now to get a good workout in and head over to the Greatness Factory for another day of manufacturing greatness. Good morning to you folks. Becky Jones King. See who we got this morning. Dean Boyer. Sean, good morning. Sean shows up. Mama taught me we dress up, we show up, we grow up, and we deliver. <clears throat> we dress up, we show up, we grow up, and we deliver. That's what Mama taught me. So good morning to everybody. Hope you got big plans today, man. I do. Good morning, Will. If you got big plans today, man, let's do something big. Let's quit playing small, right? Let's quit playing small ball and let's do something big. Uh, Jake, Jake, Brian White. Get some contracts signed today. We got big goals, and we got a long way to go and a short time to get there, folks. That's what I tell people. I think that's a song. We got a long way to go and a short time to get there. This morning's topic, Jimmy. What's up, Omar? Looking good, 75 hard. Today we're talking false positive and what that means, folks. False positive and what that means. False positive is, uh, is a concept where you lull yourself into believing you're really better than what you really are. And this is a dangerous place to live. My buddy Matt Monero, you're going to see some big announcements from me and Matt Monero, Judge Graham, uh, coming out probably maybe within the next week. Uh, but my, my buddy Matt Monero Nero constantly talked about this concept of false positive. And false positive... Is, is ultimately where you lull yourself into believing you are better than what you really are. Good morning, Doria. You lull yourself into believing you're better than what you are. And because we lull ourselves into believing we're better than what we are, we're not hungry. We're not humble. We're not coachable. We're not interested. Okay, and this is a this is a this is a tough thing to tell a person because most people believe most people that are doing good uh, to tell themselves that they're doing so good they don't need the help of anybody else. Okay, so what it really does is it suppresses the prey drive, and it and it puts a ceiling. It puts a ceiling on what you're capable of doing. Okay, and so what I hear a lot as a coach is a person has reached a certain level, a status level. <clears throat> Maybe they've reached a status level. Maybe they reached a, an income level that society says is good. Maybe they're getting a lot of. Uh, uh, Maybe they're getting a lot of uh, feedback from other people. Maybe people see this happened to me as a coach. When I was a young coach, I was winning more games than a lot of my predecessors. I was winning twenty games a year. Okay, and and that was more wins than most of my previous people had. And so I was hearing people tell me how good I was. Man, you're this up-and-coming coach. You're this great coach. Man, you're winning 20 games a year. Andy Simpson. And, and, uh, <clears throat> and you know, I believed him, man. So, so I actually believed, Robert, that I was really good. And, uh, but I was not winning championships, right? And, and some of the other championship coaches basically – the, the good ones would smack me around and say, come on, kid. Like, get it together, man. You're not good until you win a championship. You're not good until you win the whole thing. You're not good until you hit these certain levels. And me being a young and, and overly confident, maybe arrogant coach, thought, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it, so I am good. And so what this does, Julie, is it leads, leads us in this position of believing something that's not true. That's why it's called false positive. It seems positive. Like where you are in life. Like I figured this out. When my business made a million dollars a year, okay, only 4% of small business owners make a million dollars a year. And uh, and so, you know, you, 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 you have this tendency to think, man, I'm there. I'm there. Well, there's no way you can make a million a year if your business ain't even making a million a year. And you're not making a million a year if, if 
if your business is not making at least three or four million a year. Now, here's the point. You can lull yourself into believing all day long that, that, that you know, I tell people if you're not making a million a year, you really haven't figured something out. But the truth is, a, a million a year is really not even that much money in comparison, right, Trevor, to people that are, that are really doing it. When I ask really wealthy people, how much do you need? They say at least 20 million. Not a million. There's a big difference between a single-digit millionaire and a double-digit millionaire. I'm a single-digit millionaire, okay? Uh, but I'm not a double-digit millionaire yet. And and I have no... I even wrote a book called Single-Digit Millionaire just to say, hey, I know where I am in the food chain. I'm trying to get... Now, what would be the next book? From single digits to double digits. From double digits to triple digits. Now, here's what I'm saying. Good morning, Brad Fowler. What I'm saying is we cannot allow ourselves to live in this in this fake false, false positive because it really, really takes us down a path of, of closing ourselves off to growth. Like, so when I'm trying to coach people, well, I don't need coaching. Well, why don't you need coaching? Because I'm already there. I'm already making $250,000 or three hundred fifty, dollars or I'll make four fifty dollars this year. And I'm like, well, good. Uh, good, good. That's great, man. Would you like to make a million? Would you like to make two million? Would you like your business to do 10 million? See, I've made a decision. There's a big difference between the solopreneur. Let's take the solo real estate agent. Solo real estate agent is going to do 40 to 50 deals a year, man. Let's get honest. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> they're going to do 40 to 50 deals a year. They're never going to do 500 deals a year. Okay? I could speak for a living with one assistant and probably make a million bucks a year. Okay? But I can't make 10 million. And so there's a, there's a, there's a philosophical decision that you have to make about do you want to take it to the next level, right, Kevin? Do you want to take it to the next level? I made a decision that I want to build a coaching enterprise and do 10 million, 20 million. Because I, I grew up studying, you know, the, the Tony Robbins, the Dr. Covey's. Covey was doing 264 million. So I grew up studying those guys, and I'm like, man, why would you want to make a million bucks a year when, when your company can make 200 million and you can make 20 or 30 million? Like, it's crazy. Well, some people live in that false positive, and the false positive is, man, we're there, we're good, okay? And and think of it like this, if you're a coach and you win a state championship, you're the best team in Tennessee, but you're not the best team maybe in the Southeast. You're not the best team in the United States, okay? If you're the best person, if you're the best mortgage originator here in Nashville, that's good. But are you the best one in the whole state of Tennessee? Are you the best one in the southeast? Are you the best one in the whole country? Are you the best one on planet Earth? So the false positive leads us to believe that we're good. And because I'm writing a book on Prey Drive right now, and I'm doing all this stuff for person of interest, <clears throat> the per person of interest, to be honest with you, is never good. They're never satisfied. They're never complacent. They're never comfortable. They're ne they, they would never say, hey, man, I'm there. I don't need your coaching. I know I need coaching. It's just a matter of which coach, which coach is the one. And by the way, they're all, all the good ones are really good. It's just a matter of which one can help me achieve my uh, objectives. So if you're out there and you're watching this, I really want to encourage you, man. I see so many people spend so much time, I call it majoring in the minors. I made a post about this last night. And they're in, they're caught up in petty dramas and problems and issues. And man, they're small. It's small. It's small ball, guys. In comparison to your true potential, it's absolutely, it's absolutely small ball, right? And I'm trying to get you out of this land of false, false positive and into a land of truth. All progress starts by telling the truth. And once you start telling the truth about where you are and where you want to go, then you become humble and teachable. And when you become humble and teachable, it's really where the magic happens. Because now you're out there looking, man. You're looking for an advantage. So I hope this helps you. Uh, I want to invite you, if you're out there, if you've been watching me, to sit in on my coaching session next Wednesday when I do Monster Producer. I'm going to do it at 7.30 in the morning. It'll be a live session. If you would like to sit in on there, okay, just, just let me know in the comments. And I'm going to post the link for you to watch it next week at 7.30, okay? And I'm going to be breaking down the explanation of value, the explanation of service. It's going to be a game changer for you. It's what we're teaching this month in our coaching program. And, uh, you know, I want to help you, man. I want to help you play at a high frequency. 
It's you versus your potential. It's it's you. It's not you versus other people. It's you versus you, man. It's you versus you. So I believe everybody needs a coach. I believe a good coach can change your life. I believe a good coach can get you to places you never even thought about going to. I believe why in the world would you go at this alone without a good coach? That's a good question, isn't it? <clears throat> a good coach will take you to a place you didn't know. So let's have a big day. Let's not live in false positive. Let's be humble and coachable. Let's be humble and coachable. Let's seek out the knowledge we need to play at the level we need to to get the results we need to. And no matter what results we're getting, folks, let, let, let's, let's, let's know that there's another level for us, right? Okay? No false positive for us, guys. No false positive for us. God bless you. And, folks, let's have a good day. Scott Ayers, let's talk today. Let's talk today. Okay? Let's have a big day today, folks. We're talking about not living in a land of false positive, which leads you to believe you're better than what you are, <clears throat> which leads you to a closed-off mindset, not a growth mindset. Okay? Humble, hungry, coachable. Humble, hungry, coachable. That's where we're going to live today, guys. Have a great day. God bless you.